over all the earth. He subdues peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the glory of Jacob, whom he loves. God has ascended with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a skillful song. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The prince of the people have assembled themselves as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Thank him again for who he is and what he 
is already done. Thank you, Lord. Let me call your attention to 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. In the New Testament, the book is 1 Peter, the chapter is 4, the verses are 12 and 13. We serve the risen Savior, and he's in the world today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 13. When you found it, you will discover these words. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, although some strange as as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice. To the extent that you participate in Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. I want to talk about exceeding joy. Exceeding joy. The Apostle Peter coined these words today. And he allows us to take a view into strange things that we may think that are happening. The Apostle Peter seems to be looking at the 21st century. And it seems like he understands very well that we are going through some things down here. It looks like the Apostle Peter can actually see our government headed in the wrong direction. It appears, it appears that he knows that our governor has lost what could have been his mind. The Apostle Peter says, don't think, think it's strange. When you fall into these fiery, dark trials that you find yourselves in, everybody in this room is going through something. I contend, I contend today that if you're not going through something, you're just coming out of something. If you haven't gone through something or you're just coming out of something, just keep waking up in the morning something will be knocking on your door. That's right. We act like, we act like because we're Christians, we ought not suffer. We have come to the conclusion that God is going to fight every battle for us, and if he's fighting the battle, we will be able to stand outside of the battle and look while God takes place, and while God fights the battle for us. My dear, I wanted to stop by on my way to the rapture to let you know that yes, God fights our battles. But you have to stay in the battle as God fights the battle. Yes, Men, women, boys and girls all over the world are trying to throw up their hands and holler. Trying to say this is too hard for me to suffer through. These first century Christians that Peter writes to are going through some trying times in the local church. You see, in the local church, they had problems with the government not allowing them to worship as they wanted to. In the first century church, they had issues with things all around them that tried to hold them captive from honoring Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You see, in the first century church, they weren't able to 
jump in their car, drive down the road, turn right, turn left, go straight and park at 4251 Shiro My Road. Walk in unhindered, unhampered, and do their thing for the Lord and honor him as we have freedom to do in these great United States of America. You see, communism had nothing on those who walked with God in Peter's day. You see, the fact of the matter is the government was so corrupt and, and the people were so hard on brand new Christians, they had to hide and worship God. But here we are today. We got freedom. We have, we have freedom to walk. We have freedom to worship. We have freedom of speech. We have speed freedom even now to bear arms. And we still refuse to honor the God that we serve. So Peter penned these words to us as he penned the words to the saints of his day. These who are suffering from backbiting, suffering from killing, suffering from attacks from all different directions. The apostle Peter says to them, I know you're going through suffering. And the suffering that you're going through is for Christ's sake, not for your own sake. You see, God, God will rescue us, God will keep us, God will shelter us in time of storm if we work it for the Lord. The problem, the problem today is we expect God to pull us out of stuff. When we're working for ourselves and on our own behalf and God is not getting the glory. But here the apostle Peter says to them, beloved of God, don't think it strange when you fall into fiery darts and fiery temptations. He says to them, don't, whatever you do, don't think it's a strange thing that, that these things are happening in your life. He says to them, he says, this is common. This, this thing is a common thing for folk who love the Lord. I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about you getting mad at somebody in the church. I'm, I'm not talking about you getting upset because somebody said something to you. I'm not talking about you getting upset just because you couldn't have your way. I'm talking about people who are honestly looking to praise God and lift up his name and they really can't do it safely. You see, we don't need armed guards to walk us to church. We don't even need a, a security offer to, to usher us into the church. But because we are so busy doing our own thing, we are no longer suffering for Christ's sake. We are suffering because of what we have chosen to do. In the text, they are suffering for Christ's sake. And Peter says to them, beloved, do not think it strange that concerning the fiery doctrines, concerning the fiery trials that have fallen upon you. He said, this is not a strange happening. This has been going on for a long time. This, this is not something that you're just suffering through because you wear your hair a certain way. It's not something you're suffering through because, because you are the right color or the wrong color. This is not something they're going through simply because they, they wore the wrong suit or the wrong dress or the wrong skirt or the wrong pair of pants today. They are suffering for Christ's sake. How many of you today are willing to suffer for Christ's sake? How many of you today are willing to stop gossiping for Christ's sake? How many of you are willing to stop backbiting for Christ's sake? How many of you are willing to, to stop protecting the wrong and letting the right be exposed for Christ's sake? How many of you are able to hang in there and, and press a bill and, and keep coming even though they, they, they abuse you and accuse you? Somebody in this room today have heard the statement before that it doesn't take all that. Going to church on Wednesday doesn't take all that. Going to church on Sunday, it doesn't take all that. Going to evening service, it doesn't take all that. These are oppositions to all of us who worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. 
He says, don't think it's strange. Don't, don't think it's something that's happened to you that's not happened to other people. Don't, don't think it, that somebody's picking on you simply because you're walking with God. You know, even, even outside of the church, we have sanctified bullies. Those, those who will, who will point finger at, fingers at us, those who will try to shut us down, those who will, who will not go to church, but they'll tell you, you need to hang out a little while alone. He says, don't think it's, don't think it's strange. He says, these have come to try you. These trials, these things that you're going through, they've come to try you. The stuff that you, you, you're trying to deal with, they're coming to try you. You see, these are fiery dots. Where they hit you, the devil will hit you below the belt. It's fiery dots where, where the devil will tell you that you're not right when you know you're right. These are fiery ducks when the devil tried to accuse you of being, being one who is a Bible thumper and you don't like that. It's all right to be a Bible thumper. It's, it's all right to be a church boy. It's all right to be a church girl. It's all right to be a holy roller because at the end of the day, you are able to rejoice with exceeding great joy. He says, these fiery trials, this fiery trial, which is to try you as though it is strange, it's a strange thing happened to you, don't think it's strange. He says, but rejoice. He says we ought to be glad about it. We, we ought to rejoice when things hit us. We, we ought to rejoice when people talk bad about us. We ought to rejoice when they make fun of our Christianity and our religion. We ought to rejoice when, when they say, well, you going out there to that church and, and you know COVID is still out there? Well, COVID was at the last place you left. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just serve notice on you. COVID is aside the road. Mm -hmm. COVID is in the nightclub. Mm. Yes, Lord. COVID is at sporting events. Mm -hmm. And I see people packing in and, and, and they want to use the excuse that is outside. But if you're too inches from each other or, or shoulder to shoulder with each other you still just like the inside don't think it's strange when people say to you that that you're just walking down there with the Lord and, and you're still poor and broke anyway you're walking with the Lord and you're still losing your car anyway you're walking with the Lord and you still don't have good relations anyway I say to you hold on Hold out and don't give in. He said, don't think it's strange. He says, don't think it's strange, but you ought to be rejoicing. It means to have joy all over again. It means every time you think about how people misuse you for the sake of God, you ought to have joy all over again. Every time they abuse you, every time they talk bad about you, you ought to have joy all over again. He says, not only should you have joy, you, have, you ought to rejoice. You see, joy takes place on the inside. Yes, sir. And it displays itself on the outside. Yes. Yes. You see, joy, joy is not, joy is not intimidated by the things of this world. Joy is not shut down because people have things to say that is bad against you. Joy is not pushed aside simply because things are not going right with you. Things can be going to hell in a hat basket, but you ought to still have joy. Yeah, yeah. You ought to have joy. You ought to have joy when things don't go right. Mm -hmm. You ought to have joy when things are going right. Mm -hmm. You ought to have joy because God is the one who initiates joy. Yeah, right. Said in the Sunday school lesson this morning that the Holy Spirit, he the Holy Spirit, he resides in us. And that's why we can sing the song, he walks with us. He talks with us. And he tells us that I am his own. We need to understand because of the Holy Spirit on the inside. We have joy that displays itself on the outside. He says, whatever you do, my brother and my sister, 
Don't act like it's strange, but, but you ought to rejoice, and you ought to rejoice to the extent that, that you participate in Christ's suffering. You ought to have joy to the extent that you be reminded of how Christ suffered over 2,000 years ago. Yes, sir. He says you ought to have joy, so much so until you're reminded that he took an old rugged cross and took it up to a skull hill called Calvary. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you ought to have rejoicing in your heart. You ought to have joy to the point that you know they beat him all night long. He says that you ought to have joy. You ought to have joy to the point where you recognize and you understand that God is a healer in the midst of the beatings. Yeah. You see, there's a scripture that says that, that the 39 lashes that they put on Jesus back, it, by, by his stripes we are healed. Let me just tell you, it's not talking about your physical healing. It's talking about your spiritual healing. It's talking about the healing that takes place in one's heart. God is concerned about your spiritual healing. Yes, yes. He's concerned. He's concerned about how you live for him. He's concerned about how you walk for him. He's concerned about how you carry yourself on his behalf. God is concerned about you so much so until he was bruised for your transgressions. Yeah, just this God that this God that we serve, Jesus the Christ, he we ought to be in tune with his suffering. He says we ought to partake, partake of Christ's suffering. You see, Thursday night wasn't easy for Christ. Yeah, they took him to a kangaroo court. They, 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 they had it all lined out for him. Christ was suffering, an innocent man was suffering the life of a guilty person. Yeah, they took him from one judgment hall to another judgment hall. They led him from one place to the other, and they could not find any fault with him. And I'm going to tell you, he was suffering. And after they, they proclaimed him guilty, even though he was innocent, they proclaimed him as guilty. He had to suffer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they took a cat of nine tails and, and they put glass and metals in his back. And they snatched out plugs from his body. It was an awful beating. They, they spit in his face. We have to come to a point in our life where we, we realize that things around us may be bad, but they're not half as bad as the suffering of Jesus the Christ. They slapped him. They planted a thorn. Thorns and, and put a crown on his head. It was a crown to imitate the fact that he's the king of the Jews, but it was not a glorious crown. They had spikes sticking out of it and they pushed it and forced it down in his head until blood began to scream out from his head. Yes, sir. He was suffering for you yes. and for me. Yes, yes. Yes, Jesus the Christ, they planted a thorn, a, a crown of thorns. They put it on his head. They pulled it down tight. Blood gushed out. He was, he was beaten unrecognizably, even from his mama. He was suffering for you, and he was suffering for me. The same Jesus that they whipped, the same Jesus that they beat, the same Jesus that they put a thorn of crown on, they spit in his face. Somebody couldn't have handled that. Lord have mercy. Especially during the COVID era. Wow. They spit in his face. Mm -hmm. If you ever want to demean a person, you spit in their face. That's demeaning and degrading. They spit in his face. Blood was gushing out of his side. Blood was gushing from his head. They took his beard. And they plucked hair out of his beard one at a time. He was suffering for you. And he suffered for me. Thank you. That same Jesus that suffered, they made him carry his own cross. Yeah. They carried, he, they made him carry his own cross up a hill called Calvary. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And as he was carrying the cross, they were still beating him. Yeah. Lord have mercy. The cross was so heavy yeah. that he fell to the ground several times. Uh -huh. Let me just tell you, he didn't fall to the ground because of the heaviness of the wood of the cross. 
He was falling to the ground because of the sin, your sin and my sin that he carried on that cross. He was suffering for you and he suffered for me. Yes, sir. They laid him, they laid his back on a tree. Yes, they did. They laid his back on a cross. They nailed him in his wrist. They riveted his feet. He was suffering for you and he's suffering for me. Amen. They nailed him tight. That same Jesus had already told them, I double dog that. Well. To just lift me up. Yeah. If you lift me up, I will draw all men unto me. Don't you know? They nailed him to the cross. Yes. They riveted him to the cross. And they took a, took a chance on it. Yeah. They raised him up. They raised him high. He was suffering. Yes, sir. His whole body weight was in his wrist. His whole body weight was in his feet. They had nailed him to the cross. Yes, they did. He was suffering for you and suffering for me. Thank you, Jesus. And we think coming to church, we think getting out in the rain, we think that coming in the cold is a bad thing. Jesus suffered for us. Yes, he did. They nailed him. They riveted him. They lift him. And then they made sure that his lungs began to fill up with blood. Yes. That same Jesus, they hung on Calvary. Yeah, yeah. He died on Calvary. Right. He died that day. He, he died a sinner's death. Well, he died where the whole city could come out and view him. He died a humiliating death. He died for you and for me. Peter says we have to come and to partake of that. If we can't partake of that, we don't have anything to brag about. We don't have anything to worry about. We don't have anything to complain about. Because Jesus died on Calvary. Yes, he did. In his death, it became midnight at midday. Yeah. Darkness filled the vast country. Jesus, the Son of God, was dying on the cross. Yes, sir. He was suffering an awful death. Yeah. Well, they tried to give him, <clears throat> tried to give him some, some vinegar nah. to try to kill the pain. He wiped it off. He wanted to suffer just for you right. and just for me. Thank you, Jesus. It was a voluntary death. He, nobody made him die. No one took his life. He laid it down for you and for me. They killed him. The S-O-N was shot. God had everybody's attention. The S-U-N refused to shout. They killed my Lord and your God yeah. on a skull hill called Calvary. Yeah. In the Greek, uh, we read it, one centurion soldier cried out, surely this must be the Son of God. But in the Greek it says that several soldiers cried out, this must be the Son of God. Yes, sir. Nobody can take a wounding like this. No one can take a suffering like this. It must be the Son of God. It killed my Lord until the earth took an epileptic fit. Yeah. Began to reel and rock like a drunken man. Yeah. The veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. Yeah. God tore it. Nobody else could do it. Nobody did it but God. God tore it. And because of Jesus' death on Calvary. Yes. Now we can go boldly. We can go with confidence before the Lord God ourselves. We don't need a preacher. We don't need a priest. We can go boldly before the Lord all by ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. We can tell God all about it. Yes. <laughs> tell him about your suffering. Tell, tell him about your pain. Tell, yes. tell him about your agonizing. You can go boldly before God all by yourself. Thank you, Jesus. All for yourself in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. The yes. same Jesus suffered up for us. He died on that cross that day. He died, and after he died, they took a spear and stuck it in his side. Yes, they did. Out came blood and water, and now we sing a song. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood. Yes, 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. He died. His blood flowed down for the remission of our sins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He suffered for you and for me. Took him down. Joseph of Arimathea took the body of Jesus and laid it in his brand new tomb. Joseph of Arimathea buried Jesus in his brand new tomb. He was buried in a tomb where no man had ever laid. Yes, sir. Jesus of Christ had promised him, if you tear this building down, in three days, I will raise it up again. Yes. Yes. Let me just share with you, three days later, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He got up with all power. He, he got up with, with sanctifying power. He, he got up with, with glorifying power. That's why the text declares that when his glory is revealed, yes, sir. then and only then can you be glad with exceeding joy. Let me tell you, it may not, you may not see it right now. It may not be on the scene right now. You may not be, be able to rejoice like you're really going to rejoice, but you ought to rejoice right now so you can rejoice later. Yes, the little fiery docks that we're going through, the little fiery trials that, that we're going through, these are temporary, temporary sufferings. Yes, yes. But one of these days, yes, yes. if we believe the Lord, one of these days, if we believe that he got up from the dead, one of these days, we're going to join in with the four beastly creatures. Around the throne of God crying, holy, holy, holy. Amen. Blessed is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. One of these days we're going to join in with the 24 elders around the throne of God. Right. Crying, holy, holy, holy. Unto the Lord God, our mighty. I just came by to let you know today, keep on suffering. For Christ's sake. Don't, don't make foolish decisions, but, but keep suffering for Christ's sake. You see, we make foolish decisions and we think we're suffering for Christ's sake. But the fact of the matter is, we are only suffering for Christ's sake is when we deny ourselves and walk with God. As we deny ourselves, as we walk with God, we're suffering for the Lord. So don't wait till you get to the other side. Don't wait till the battle is over. You can shout right now. Don't, don't wait till you get there. Don't wait till they crown him Lord of Lords. You can celebrate right now. You see, we celebrate in faith now. We have exceeding joy now. We ought to rejoice right now. Don't think it's strange. In the midst of all that's going on around you, you need to make sure without, without a shadow of a doubt, you celebrate him right now. So when things don't go right now, when things go wrong on your behalf, you ought to celebrate God. Raise the roof for him. His name is Jesus. He's the righteous son of God. Just the mention of that name ought to be enough for you. Just the mention of his name. When we sing to Jesus, we ought to celebrate him. When we talk about Jesus, we ought to celebrate him. There is none like our Lord and our God. The same Jesus is coming back again. And he's coming to get a church without a sprite or a wrinkle. He, he's coming back again. That same Jesus that died on Calvary. The same Jesus that got up from the dead. The same Jesus that suffered for you and me. We ought to be able to rejoice evermore. Will you rejoice with me? Are you just waiting till they crown the Lord and Lord? Are you waiting on the trumpet of God to sound? I'm not waiting on the trumpet to sound. I want to celebrate him right here. Right now. He's worthy. He's worthy. Him. He's worthy to rejoice. And just in case you can't praise him for who he is, I want to praise him for what he's done. When I look over the shoulders of my life and I see where God has brought me, I can't hold my peace. I rejoice forever. I'm looking forward to that day where the saints of God will get together. On the other side, what a time, what a time, what a time. This is just a rehearsal down here. 
And we ought to be rehearsing down here. We ought to celebrate him for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the righteous team, the horse pouring in the back, the light bright morning star. His name is Jesus, the healer. His name is Jesus, the one who rescues us. His name is Jesus, the one that keeps us. His name is Jesus, the one that makes us sane. His name is Jesus, Jesus the Christ, the anointed one. God's only begotten son, his only unique son. We celebrate him today. We glorify him. We magnify him with exceeding great joy. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. I was on my way to hell. But he pulled me out like a iron from the burning. There may be somebody listening to me today who's on your way to hell. God wants to rescue you. God wants to save you. He wants to give you a new course. He wants to be your savior. And he wants to be your Lord. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just that you are. I hear you. Well, preacher, wait. Let me, let me go and get it right. You'll never get it right. You got to come to Jesus and let him get it right for you. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You can trust Jesus. You can trust the Savior of the world. And for that we rejoice. We thank Him. If you're listening to me today and you want to be saved, you want to go to heaven when you die, just join me in prayer. Repeat after me and invite Jesus into your life. Just say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you pray this prayer, you are now born again. You're on your way to heaven when you die. There may be others of us who, who are saved, but we struggle. We, we find ourselves where sin is taking a toll on us. I want to pray with us. We pray with you. Pray with us. Father God, we thank you. We honor you as right and we are wrong. We honor you as the awesome, magnificent God. We thank you, Lord, for who you are and for what you do. Now, Lord, we come repenting. Repenting of our thoughts. Repenting of our actions. Repenting of falling short. We ask you to forgive us. Give us wisdom. Give us knowledge and understanding. We renew our commitment to you. We we dedicate to you. We repent of our sins. We ask you to forgive us. Give us new direction. Give us new hope. And bless us in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. There may be others who don't have a church home or who live, looking for a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church. If you want to join our church, please inbox me and let me know that you want to be a member of this great church in Southeast Houston. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service on today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Well, we thank God for who He is and what He's already done.
We serve the awesome and the amazing God. He has blessed us again. And he has blessed us to come and give him glory. Brother Dixon, you, you come for me. God has blessed us again. He has blessed us.
in our prayer time, we want to continue to pray for Sister Lydia Lee. We're lifting Sister Lydia Lee. She is the mother of Pastor L.D. Lee. We want to lift her, lift her in prayer. And we want to pray for Sister Betty Funberger. Sister Betty Funberger. Sister Betty Funberger is one of our, our homestead members who uh, resides in the Hill Park area. She has gone to the hospital this week. Uh, we want to lift her in prayer. Uh, her husband is, is Brother Bob Funberger. Bob Funberger and I worked 30 years ago together in the chemical plant. They are well over in their 80s. So we want to lift them up in prayer. That's Brother Betty, Brother Bob Funberger. His wife is in the hospital, Sister Betty Funberger. We want to lift them in prayer. Next week, uh, this coming week, this week, Wednesday, December 1st, we're having face-to-face -face choir rehearsal for all those, Sister Paul, for all those who are Sister Paul, Sister uh, Dilworth, we are, we're having face-to-face. -face. Brother Dixon, can you separate them back there, please, sir? I, I said it three times already. Um, we're having face-to-face, -face, we're having face-to-face -face choir rehearsal on December the 1st, Wednesday, December the 1st, at 7 p.m. We're asking all choir members or those who want to sing or think they can sing or somebody lied to them and they could sing. We're asking everybody to show up. Sister Paul, we're asking everybody to show up face-to-face um, uh, -face that have been vaccinated. We want all the people in the choir stand who has been vaccinated uh, as we prepare for singing the first Sunday December, first Sunday of December, we are asking, asking all choir members to be back in the choir stand. And so Wednesday, you need to be here, December the 1st at 7 p.m. Uh, our Bible study will be back in person. So we're asking all members to be here at 7 p.m. So we can start our broadcast at 7.15. Uh, Bible study starts at 7 p.m. And then we will have choir rehearsal immediately after Bible study. Uh, December 5th, that's next Sunday, December 5th, we are invited to our annual event at the Holy Trinity Church, Sunday night service at 6 p.m. All of those who will go, please be there at 545, Holy Trinity Missionary Baptist Church, where my pastor, who was here last Sunday, uh, Pastor Richard Joe Rose is the pastor. We'll be there at 5.45 p.m. next Sunday, that's December the 5th. That's first Sunday, December. Also, second Sunday in December, we will have our grand, our grand interest, our grand interest back into the church. Our grand interest, we we'll ask all vaccinated people to come and join us in our grand interest. We want to uh, come back after 18 to 20 months. We want to come on back to church we're going to have our grand interest back. That's at 1030 a.m. Uh, second Sunday, December the 12th. Come on back to the church house and, and let's praise the Lord from the building in the building so we can magnify his name together and not forsake the assembly of ourselves together as some do, but coming together in fellowship and in worship. take this time to to thank thank you all who celebrated Sister Davis and myself on last week. Thank you so much for your gifts. Thank you for for your fellowship. Thank you for 17 years of uninterrupted service here at the New Beginning Church. Certainly God has been glorified and he has given us strength to continue. But I don't take it for granted. There's something that you did not have to do. So I just want to thank you for doing it. Amen. Thank you so much for your participation, for your gifts, for your prayers, and your support. Thank you so much. Let us stand and be dismissed.
praise in the name of Jesus the Christ we come. We thank you for another privilege of worshiping you. We thank you for another honor to come together and fellowship unto you. We thank you, Lord, that we know now that it's not strange when we fall into fiery darts and temptations. But we ought to rejoice. And we ought to have exceeding joy as we are reminded of Jesus' suffering. And we are reminded of what he has done for us. For Lord, we look forward to the day that it will be revealed. And we will have exceeding joy in celebrating God himself. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we worship you. And God, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Amen. Amen.